Hey everyone, so a few days back I reviewed the RTX 2060 from NVIDIA, the first raid facing enabled GPU for the mainstream user, priced at $350. Now, in part of my review, I took a look at Battlefield 5 raid facing performance and made the point that while 1080p on ultra settings with ultra DXR was possible at 60 frames per second, well, the thing about benchmarks is that usually they are a frame rate average. At the extreme, if you have, uh, say, half the content running at 30 frames per second and half of it running at 90, hey, that's a 60 frames per second average, but you aren't going to be happy when you run into those slower bits, right? Well, what I didn't do in the review was look at anything other than ultra settings, and having spent some time tweaking, I think people will be uh, genuinely surprised at how well this game actually runs under DXR on the 2060. And that's what this video is about. You see, I kind of love getting more value orientated hardware to deliver experiences that belie their apparent capabilities. And yeah, I have to admit that I sort of became kind of obsessed with getting a locked 1080p60 with ray tracing in this game on this card. Before we go on, there's one thing I want to stress, which is that Battlefield 5 is getting another patch soon, which should coincide with availability of the RTX 2060. What we do know about this update is that it's going to enable DLSS, uh, deep learning upscaling if you like, which should allow you to run Battlefield 5 more smoothly at a variety of resolutions, thanks to its AI powered upscaling algorithms. On top of that, it may well be the case that we'll see further ray tracing performance optimizations, plus a focus on improved RT 2060 performance in particular. And yes, when that patch drops, we'll be looking at it for sure though. Bottom line though, what you'll see in this video will be the state of play on the current version, almost like a worst case scenario then I guess, and a test of how strong the ray tracing implementation is bearing in mind that there's the very strong possibility that DICE would never have even seen this particular card. But yeah, let's return to my obsessions. Can we get that locked 1080p60 that you're seeing here with ray tracing enabled? I mean, the concept of getting a game this good looking running with real-time ray tracing on a $350 graphics card is pretty immense, don't you think? Well, let's also remember that it's only five months or so ago since John, Alex and I visited Gamescom and played Battlefield 5 at 1080p60 on an RTX 2080 Ti, a GPU that's three times the cost of the 2060 with twice the ray tracing power. Okay, so let me be honest with you, all of this lovely, beautifully smooth 1080p60 footage you've seen so far is actually running on the RTX 2060 after I tweaked the settings for the optimal experience on this hardware. Even on the unpatched version of the game, it's possible to get results that are identical to what you're seeing here with a consistent lock frame rate. I was surprised, and the way I got those results is a curious mixture of conventional and surprisingly unconventional tweaks. I just think it looks beautiful, but yeah, Getting this consistency, getting that lock 60 frames per second, ensuring that 60 was the minimum. Interesting challenge. Okay, so let's rewind to the uh, review clips that I posted. There was a lot of 50 frames per second in there, but also frame rates that could be higher or lower. It all depended on the content, really. By and large, the more complex a scene or the more shiny bits there were, the more performance could be impacted. I was looking at minimums mostly in 40 FPS territory, but before we go on, right at the top left of the Reaver Tuner stats there, note the VRAM requirement. 5 gigabytes or higher at 1080p, which is, you know, remarkably large. Now that stat will prove crucial, especially when we look at performance later on. But as things stand, if our lowest performance is 40 frames per second or thereabouts, to get to a locked 60, we're looking at a steep challenge. We need to increase the worst case scenario frame rates by 33%. In fact, ideally, we'd need more, a fair bit more. 60 frames per second locked is usually achieved by giving your system extra overhead. So yeah, back in the day, I remember John Carmack talking about Rage, a game built for 60 hertz gameplay, and he talks about having around 10% or so of extra overhead. So yeah, really, we should be targeting something like 66 frames per second or even more. So let's begin with a more detailed look at the problem in hand. I want more detailed metrics this time around. Frame rate counters are one thing and can obviously help, but I want a closer look at frame time and the accuracy provided by video capture analysis. So I'm here at the Battlefield 5 command line. 
Two commands we're going to be using here. One brings up the small frame rate counter, which I'll be using for general guidance while I capture before doing the deeper analysis, while the other option here engages that brightly coloured border on the left. This is the FCAP border, which marks up every frame with a different colour and can be tracked by our software. You'll not want to look at that though through the course of this video as it's very, very distracting, so I'm going to zoom in just a touch so you don't need to see it. First of all, I want to go back to playing the game fully maxed out on Ultra because during the review phase something bothered me and I hope it's something that's been fixed in the upcoming patch. So yeah, performance is most often in 50 frames per second territory, but it can go lower. And then there's a kind of weird stuttering that I've never seen in a Battlefield game before. Certainly not with frame rates in this ballpark. I mean, run any game to the point where your CPU limited and all manner of stutter can emerge but I've run Battlefield 1 at 120 frames per second on a laptop, so something's definitely weird here. Anyway, I'm going to cover a range of content in the game, but I'm starting with this campaign mission. The first part of it is repeatable, so comparisons will be easier. And right here, we're at 1080p maxed with a not too bad readout. We're in the 50s here. And, you know, as you can see on the ground there, we're not exactly sure of ray traced reflections, but as we carry on, performance starts to degrade. And yeah, the stutters are beginning to kick in. You can see them as sharp dips on the frame time graph. Something isn't right. OK, so let's move on to another campaign mission. Again, baseline performance in the 50s, which for a card like the RTX 2060 running on max settings, pretty awesome. But again, the same stutter, and this time it's actually worse. Even outside of the stutter, we're hitting minimums of around 40 frames per second. So here's the thing. It's actually really easy to blame the hardware to say that the RTX 2060 can't handle ray tracing, but actually that isn't the case. There's more going on here and the implications are fascinating. It um, upends some of the uh, expectations we have when it comes to tweaking a PC game. Yeah, for a moment I want to cut back to that fantastic Battlefield RTX action, locked 1080p60, and it's awesome. I can also assure you that I've not tweaked the resolution. This is indeed native 1080p. In fact, I can run over 60 frames per second, but like I said earlier, citing the Carmack example, for a good lock you need overhead, and for the most part, I have it. So let's not beat about the bush, here's the secret. I've relocated to another part of that level and you can see that even with little going on we've got that problem again. Frame rate minimums, this time at 45 frames per second. First order of business, I'm going to dig into the advanced menu and try taking down the DXR level a notch. So we were at 42, 43 FPS going in and dropping DXR to high. Hmm, we're still at the same performance level, it didn't do anything. Reflectivity and resolution of reflections takes a small hit, but there's no change to frame rate, and this suggests some kind of imbalance in the system elsewhere. So let's take DXR down to medium, and this time we have a result. We're at 50 frames per second now, and uh, this is a 16% boost to performance. However, frame rate still isn't where it needs to be, is it? We need to be at 60. I spent an age on the other settings trying to figure out what I could tweak, but the biggest boost I got was kind of weird. Check this out, I'm taking textures from Ultra down to High, and I'm taking DXR back up to Ultra. And here we are, 60 frames per second, up from the 42, 43 that we had earlier. So yeah, just changing the texture setting from Ultra to High has given us 39.5% boost to performance. But as we return to gameplay and move about, we're dipping beneath that 60 threshold. Putting DXR to medium, well we're over the threshold then, mostly at around 70 frames per second. And yes, crucially, we've got that overhead we were looking for. The question is whether it sustains across other content. So yeah, reducing texture quality and getting a huge bump to performance, kind of unbelievable. Are we actually missing anything by dropping from ultra to high? Well, those textures are kind of designed for higher resolution displays. Not really, I think we're pretty good here. So the question is whether we can indeed sustain that level of overhead on more challenging content. So let's look at the tank scene that proved bothersome earlier on. We were in the mid 50s there to begin with and now we're at around 75 frames per second. Medium DXR isn't exactly nerfing the quality of the reflections either, they still look great. And yeah, we'll take a look a bit later at what the compromises actually are, but in the here and now. Let's try restoring DXR to ultra though with this level and yeah, we're back to that similar 60 frames per second that we saw last time around. 
but even in a simple scene, yeah, again, as we move about, we can dip beneath 60. Textures back up to ultra settings. Yes, now we're back at 45 frames per second. And yeah, that's kind of curious, as it's 45, not the 50 that we first saw in this scene. So I'm wondering if you're thinking what I'm thinking about what is actually the major limiting factor in the game, running under RT with the 2060. Medium DXR gives us a nice boost, and yeah, it's medium quality ray tracing and high textures that are the key here. As the tank sequence plays out, we're mostly above 60, but there are occasions in certain scenes where our overhead isn't quite enough and we drop beneath 60. We'll address that in a second, but here's my theory. Ray tracing is extremely memory intensive. Running the game at Ultra with Ultra DXR, Reva Tuner says that around 5.5 gigs of RAM is being eaten up. Maybe something's wrong with the indicator here, but I believe that we're VRAM constrained. It explains why the game stuttered earlier on and explains why dropping texture quality delivers a vast increase in performance. But as my test with the tank continues, something curious happens. I'm starting to get stutter even though I'm on the high textures with medium DXR, my optimal settings here. Again, just a theory here, but I think there's something up with the memory management here, possibly from all the tinkering I've done. And yeah, quitting out and reloading the game and running the same tank section with the same settings. Yeah, to begin with, we're like for like here, as close as can be expected, bearing in mind that the comparison isn't exactly pixel perfect. But later on, when the system previously started to stutter, no problems at all now. But yeah, we do still need to address dropping beneath 60 frames per second. And the route forward here is to use overclocking. Using MSI Afterburner here, I'm adding 125 megahertz to the core clock, which takes us up to around two gigahertz during gameplay. And I'm upping memory bandwidth by 700 megahertz, which is a nice 10% boost there. And you can see that because gameplay is dynamic here, the differential between the two cards changes. But regardless, the overclock is clearly helping out. And at best, in the closest like-for-like -like scenes, the gap is around six frames per second. This is enough to add to our overhead in looking for a 60 FPS lock and we're done. Personally, I don't want to play with horrible screen tearing and I like consistency in gameplay, so I'm turning Resync on and you get a presentation that looks like this. And to be frank, it's tremendous. But medium DXR, it's not quite the ultra settings dream, is it? Question is, do you need ultra? So this scene in the hotel in the multiplayer Rotterdam map turns up RT to 11. So let's compare ultra to medium. Yes, there are differences, but as you'll note, you really need to zoom in hard to see them. But to begin with, resolution on the reflections is reduced. How likely are you to notice this? Well, it depends on how close you're looking at the reflections, obviously. Secondly, the smoothness of materials that work with the ray tracing is adjusted and swapping between medium and ultra, you can start to see a small amount of the inaccuracies of standard rendering starting to creep in. Finally, the specular sheen on the view weapon there. It kind of looks a bit snazzier on the medium side, but it's actually inaccurate. We're actually seeing more accurate rendering there, ray trace lighting on the view weapon on the ultra side. Probably the biggest difference actually, and I wonder if DICE can do something about that. But this room is kind of an extreme case chosen by Alex to really highlight differences. And by and large, medium is fine overall. And to be clear, even the fidelity of DXR low is better than standard rasterization on ultra. But yeah, let's say you want those ultra DXR reflections. Is the upcoming DLSS patch going to help? Nvidia's smart upscaling algorithm is getting its debut across a range of resolutions in the next Battlefield patch, and that should include 1080p. Now we can only conjecture for now on what the base resolution will be for 1080p users. The question is though, can it improve performance and with our tweaked settings, could we actually restore DXR Ultra if we trade in some resolution? Right, well I'm taking a wild stab in the dark somewhat here. Nvidia has posted some benchmarks from an early DLSS build suggesting a 35% uplift to performance. Now this is entire guesswork for me here, let me be clear, but I'm going to estimate a 900p base resolution for 1080p DLSS rendering. And that's actually something that we can plug into the game by dropping the internal resolution to 83%. At the very least here, even if my estimate is entirely wrong, we can get an idea of whether you can trade resolution for better quality DXR. 
fascinating results here then. 1080p with high textures and medium DXR is just 3% faster compared to 900p with high textures and ultra DXR. And that variance is fairly slight, bearing in mind the dynamic nature of the comparison. So yeah, I'm going to be fascinated to see what DLSS combined with DXR will offer when the patch drops. So what's the takeaway here? Well, looking at this benchmark here, we see a massive gulf between performance with textures at high and ultra. Generally, if you're running at ultra on this current version of the game, you do get a degradation in performance that is partially resolved by restarting. However, using the optimized settings described in this video and factoring out that degradation as much as we can, you can see that the difference is quite profound. This enables us to stay above 60 frames per second with a beautiful experience and with ray tracing enabled. One more thing though, multiplayer. I couldn't test this exhaustively as I had a terrible connection to every server I tried. Rendering wise though, we seem to be okay with my chosen settings. Here's a bit of a snippet to look at here. So let's wrap up then. First of all, let me stress again that I'm testing Battlefield in its current form with a build of the game that was likely not designed with the RTX 2060 in mind. I mean, DICE may not have even had access to that card at all during development at that point. But if you recall my RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti reviews, my concern was always that the lower end cards may not be able to handle ray tracing, bearing in mind the performance that we saw on pre-release code. In the here and now though, I think I've demonstrated that even without optimization, just a couple of simple tweaks can produce a beautiful experience on what is currently the entry level RTX card. Real time ray tracing in an advanced AAA game running at 60 frames per second or better on a $350 graphics card. If you'd asked me if this was possible after first playing Battlefield 5 RTX at Gamescom on a 2080 Ti, I'd have probably laughed in your face, but here it is and it's beautiful. I'm really, really looking forward to that official update next week, bearing in mind the leaps and bounds we saw from DICE in the previous patch. Okay, so that's all from me for now. You know the score when it comes to liking and subscribing. And of course, please do ring the bell for instant notifications. If you like what we do and want to support us more directly, please consider the DF Patreon. You'll get pristine quality video downloads and a library of over two years worth of content. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for joining me.